Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today we're gonna to do a top five video and we are going to look at the five good alternatives to Ubuntu. Now this isn't to say nobody should use Ubuntu. Next week we're going to do five reasons why you will want to use Ubuntu. I'm just giving different people different options. But to consider this, we have to realize that Ubuntu was the gateway that most people used as their Fourier into Linux the first time. And with that being said, it has a lot of popularity, but they have done some things recently which have made some people a little bit more concerned about following along and utilizing Ubuntu in the long term. So with that being said, we want to talk about five alternatives to Ubuntu. Now my requirements here is that it has to be a distribution that is easy to use. We're not going to have anything that we have to go into the command line or do anything that a new user to Linux would find a little more uncomfortable. The second thing is it needs to have some basic tools for basic use driver utilities or things like that. Of course, not every one of these will have all of those implemented, but just to go ahead and get an idea, we just want to make sure that we're looking at distributions that have a degree of simplicity to them. So with that, let's go ahead and dive on in. My first pick is Linux Mint. Of course, you probably saw that one coming. But what I like about Linux Mint is we have a different, a couple different options here. So this is the primary Linux Mint distribution is based on Ubuntu. So it's not completely Ubuntu free, but if you do not like that option, they do have the Linux Mint Debian edition. It's lacking a few of the tools, but otherwise it's still a very good, very easy to use system, but it's based on Debian instead of Ubuntu. Linux Mint Debian Edition only has the Cinnamon Edition, but the traditional Linux Mint does have three options you can choose from, which are Cinnamon, which is its flagship, and the desktop environment that was built for the system, and we also have XFCE and Mate. So those are your options, so you have a couple different options. Linux Mint itself has a very high level of hardware support, probably among the highest in the Linux community. More hardware support than pretty much anything out there you're going to find. Okay, it also has the default cinnamon has a layout that is highly comfortable for a Windows user to switch to it. So if you're using Windows and you are concerned about some things in Windows, you can actually go over to Linux Mint and you will find yourself very comfortable as the layout is much the same and you're not going to have a new desktop environment to learn. Overall though, Linux Mint is an excellent choice. Now, I will say that while it is based on Ubuntu, they do disagree with some things Ubuntu is doing and so a lot of those things get stripped out of Linux Mint. Number two is Manjaro. Manjaro is based on Arch Linux, which means it's gonna have a lot of your more rolling features. It is absolutely fabulous in the fact that we'll ha always have those latest packages, those latest things, if that's the thing you're looking for. But be even though it's based on Arch and has access to the Arch user repository, it also is not as difficult as Arch can be. Not that Arch is super difficult, but to install Arch from scratch will require some command line work, and that's one of the things that we are wanting to avoid in this top five. We want to look at things that are easy to install. Manjaro is the easiest way for you to get an Arch-like system that has a good deal of stability, and it also has some simple tools that you do not generally have to jump into the command line to fix. We also have a variety of different desktop environments. Most of your major desktop environments are going to be available on Manjaro because Arch supports just about everything. There is a slight downside that there have been some cases longer back and a couple I've seen recently where Manjaro can lose its stability after GUI updates. So, eh, but still at the same time, I personally have not encountered that and so I still think it's possibly a little rare. You will find some hardware is not supported. Again, that is also a little rare at this day and age, but still for the most part, as long as Manjaro installs on your system, it's probably going to work very easily. It is very comfortable to use. It has a few different official builds with, with uh, different desktop environments and some unofficial community builds, which are also still very good. Out of the box, Manjaro is a great experience and definitely a good way to go 
towards looking at an alternative to Ubuntu. Number three is MX Linux. MX Linux is based on Debian. So you get that stability of Debian. The packages are not going to roll as much as they do with, with Arch or Manjaro, which for some people is really good. I personally like that, but that is definitely a subjective thing. And what are you using your system for? But MX Linux, out of the box, it's based on Ubuntu, but it's, or excuse me, it's based on Debian, but it's very easy to install. It has tools for more system functions than even my favorites Linux Mint or Manjaro do, and that they have a nice GUI operation there to fix bootloaders, to create a system image of your, of your platform. They do have driver utilities, even though it's based on Debian. That's something that usually you'll find in your Ubuntu versions. It has a variety of other things like toggling on or off your number lock, which can be complicated for some uh, situations. There's a lot of things, a lot of tools in here that are, that are just excellent, uh, excellent tools to use. And so with that, MX Linux definitely has my hearty approval. If you're looking to switch to Linux and you do not want to use Ubuntu because you're concerned about some of the directions they're going, MX Linux is definitely a good place, as particularly if you do not want to run into the Arch environment. I'm going to say between Manjaro and MX, MX is going to probably get you a little bit more stability than Manjaro will, and it has a lot of tools and features to help you along in your distro use. Number four is Elementary OS. This is that controversial one that I'm not a huge fan of. If you follow my channel long enough, you know I'm not a big fan of this particular desktop. But at the same time, I cannot deny that it does have some good functionality for new users in that it is easy to use. It does have some tools for basic use. And some of the things that they've done that make it a little bit more annoying for a more seasoned Linux guy actually helps its stability because you're, it's harder to accidentally break elementary OS than it is if you're uh, if you're trying to break you know trying to do something on some other distribution a little bit harder to break because they've disabled the PPAs they've disabled I think. Um, there's a few functions they've disabled. I can't remember off the top of my head. Now, the other thing about elementary is if you are coming from a Mac, you're going to find the layout a little bit more a little bit more familiar. It uses its own custom desktop called Pantheon. Pantheon as a desktop is going to have a more Mac-like look. It has all of the functions and features inside of it seem a little bit more closer to a Mac. Now, it has some basic polish with the software installer, and it kind of brings a different model of software management to the Linux world. Not that it doesn't have its downsides to all these things, but those are definitely things to think about. It also is the only Linux distro I know of off the top of my head, and certainly the only one that's very easy to use, install, and figure out off the top that has parental tools built in. So if you're looking for a Linux distribution to put in the corner of your house and you have children and you want to regulate what they do and when they use, use the computer, elementary is a good logical choice because you can set up each kid with their own account and give them custom times to be on the internet to use or not use certain applications. You can prevent them from installing new software, things like that. So the parental controls built into elementary out of the box are phenomenal. So that is another reason why I do like the elementary OS. Number five is Solace. This is an independent Linux distribution, meaning that it's not based on Arch or Debian or Ubuntu or any other distribution. It's its own thing. It has its own package managers. They even built their own desktop for it called Budgie, which is a very nice balance between a Windows type layout and a few Mac type features. And that the notification bars, the, some of the side panels kind of resemble how the Mac can slide in from the side of the screen, but the layout is still very familiar to a Windows user. It has a good balance between features and customization ability without sacrificing some of the other uh, some of the other tools that you might use or, or need to use so overall solace is great it is a has a new desktop environment it is very easy to use very polished if you want something that looks and feels modern with a lot of modern functionality like online account capabilities and things like that 
then Solace with Budgie is definitely the way to go. It also provides a system that is not bloated with a lot of excessive software. One of the, the criticisms in Ubuntu is that the repositories haven't been cleaned in like five decades or whatever. And uh, that was hyperbole. Yes, I know that um, Ubuntu is not that old. But basically what that means is that the only software that you are going to find in the software installer for Solace are going to be things that will absolutely work with the system. There's no old legacy stuff, no old things. Now that's bad if there's an old application that you want to use, but it's good if you're new to Linux and you want to experiment with things without worrying about installing something that's actually a broken package. It is a young distro that does have good support. It's very easy to use, very easy to install out of the box. And it does have the tools that you need for getting your system up and running without having to drop into a terminal, which are all good things and good reasons and, and good features that we're looking at inside of this video. So those are my top five picks for good alternatives to Ubuntu that are very easy to use for your new basic user that's just looking to get your computer up and running and ready to go. Let me know your choices for distributions in the comments down below.